Welcome to Tao Living, the Art of Living podcast with your host, Lou Corletto, where you will be supported to remember that you are the driver and not the vehicle so that you can walk your life in trust. Welcome back to this episode of the Tao Living podcast, the Art of Living. And today I am blessed to have this amazing guest speaker join me. And it so happens to be on this day of recording her birthday. So I'm <laughs> going to start with happy birthday, Lydia Manto. Thank you very much. <laughs> and really extra special. Thank you for taking your time to, uh, to be with us today on the show and to share with me and with the audience the wisdom that we will unpack. Uh, and especially on your birthday. So I really appreciate that. And and uh, grateful that you're taking part of the joyous day of the auspicious day of you choosing to incarnate into this world and share your gifts. And speaking of gifts, this woman is uh, loaded with them from the world of academia, the amount of degrees that she has, a doctorate in physical therapy, uh, buku thousands of hours in yoga teacher training. She's in a teacher instructor trainer, um, iridology, kinesiology, uh, certified massage therapist, just on and on and on. And then she has the realm of the non-academia, deep intuition, uh, energetic awareness, clear audience, clear sentience. She's a multi-talented uh, and I'm a little biased because she's also my life partner. So mm -hmm. this is our first podcast together. So I'm I'm grateful to have this opportunity to share with the listening audience. So again, first, happy birthday and thank you for being here. Thank you, Lou, very much. And I'm super excited to be here also. So, so I'd like you. to start I would like to start with this, right? Let's let's go, uh let's focus on one of the main areas that is your forte, which is the uh, science and art and philosophy of yoga. And there's a place for just like I, I've seen in my vocation, where there's an, a, a particular awareness. And that seems to be like, oh, that awareness, which is um, commonplace. And that concept is now in totality, what I mean by that is, so like exercise, right, regular exercise can be used um, to rehab an injury, or it can be used to expand wellness, right? So exercise is a tool, how is the tool used, right? Um, and so I've watched so many people use the power of yoga through asanas or postures to work on their physicality, yet they think that's the essence of yoga, like, like in totality, versus recognizing that's a beautiful, powerful aspect but it's just the beginning of this greater concentric fields, right, of possibilities. So if you would uh, unpack that in a way that you see fit. Oh, that's a full question. <laughs> uh, definitely. There is like so much express expression in that awareness of yoga. And uh, yoga is, for me, yoga is life. When we start saying yoga is, um, the connection of everything with everything. Since the word yoga comes from the the word, the, the root of yoke. Yoke means union. And so is that aspect of our union with ourselves, with the divine within us, and the divine in everything. So pretty much is all aspects of life. So back it into what you ask in relations to the exercise or the physical yoga, that is also called asanas, that would be the postures where we connected with the yoga. Um, is uh, The word asana comes from the word seat. And really, initially, the asanas were created to support the body to be able to sit comfortably, to be able to meditate. Yeah, because if somebody does not feel good comfortably on their physicality, it's going to be very hard to suit their mind, to be able to connect it to a place of concentration and meditation. So uh, the word asana, again, the, the seat and then transforming into postures comes just to prepare for meditation. 
And so I remember that's one of the things that I learned from you many, many moons ago mm -hmm. was the aspect that, oh, the whole original point from antiquity about using the asanas wasn't just to like stretch my body for the physical exerciseness of the place. It was to enhance the capacity to sit in meditation longer, non-disturbed, so I could then connect to source through meditation. I'm like, oh, like, so just that awareness changed the entire process of the intent of practice with asanas. Yes, absolutely. And uh, thank you again for bringing that up. And if you see, like, for example, I love sharing with my students in relations to if they look into all the martial arts, you know, that is, comes in the base of the motions, it comes in the inspiration of animals. And so it, with the yoga it was the same. When they start connecting to what wow, is going to feel good for me to heal my body, to be able to sit for meditation, they start observing animals, animals stretching, animals moving and animals connecting to uh, their bodies and seeing that as nature as our mirror. And, and, and that's why I'm so connected to nature in that perspective to remind ourselves how everything is there and is here. And, and asana wasn't different. Yeah. And I love that connection with uh, both yoga and the martial arts of watching nature. Right. So hence the terms like, down dog, up dog, dolphin, pigeon, right? It's like, where do these postures come from? Uh, it's kind of, you know, included in the, in the phraseology. Okay. Uh, studying martial arts, right? Watching, uh, and so when I when I help people remember, it's like, look at the difference between the animal kingdom uh, and the human kingdom, if you will. The first thing every animal does in the morning before they do anything else is stretch but they specifically stretch their core which is their spine hence mm -hmm. right the the uh, connection there uh meaning they realize i need to open up my lifeline before i start my day whereas people right we get out of bed pound the coffee and, and stereotypically of course uh and then tr you know trudge into the flow of the day versus mm -hmm. opening up the lifeline getting centered getting grounded now hey cool let's take off yeah so um, this this segue from like asanas into meditation, the so where does that keep going? Like where is this process of the the flow of yoga take us? Well, I will answer that question as I'm gonna bring you back something that you mentioned about as animals stretch and they stretch, especially their center, their life force, the the spine, and and in that connection is re. I love to remind everyone our centers of energies, and and that's why when someone connected to to the chakras or they connected to deeper levels of meditation, there is that huge connection to the spine, to the base of our bodies, the pelvic floor, into all the way to the, the crown of our heads, and really, really lean, uh, leaning and, and tracing the pathway of the spine, the life force, yeah, as we would go into words as kundalini, as the movements of the nadis, and so on. But uh, answering your question, that I already start mentioning into relations to energy. The study of yoga goes from the physicality, yeah? Also the bodies that would be the uh, breath body, that would be our life force through pranayamas that are the study of our breath and techniques that we can use our breath to, again, activate that center channel, activate our life force, Prana, yama, prana is the life force and yama is the learning and the growth, the diving into the understanding of prana and the application of how we can assess the life force deeper, right? Yeah, going back to we can stop eating for quite a number of days. We can drink water. We, we can stop drinking water also for a good amount of days, uh, but you stop breathing. We won't stay too long if we stop breathing for a good amount of hours or a good amount of minutes. 
So that comes that power of our life force there, our prana. And so it would be a deeper level into understanding and connection of our breath. From that, we would uh, dive in into so many aspects of all our other bodies. We have the physical body. We have the breath body. We have the emotional body. We have the mental body, right? We have more the subtle bodies of ourselves, the energetics, vibrational, and spiritual. So the yoga really is encompassing everything. And the ultimate goal is? <laughs> the ultimate goal is connection. Mm. It's really the ultimate go goal is to remember that we are love. Mm. Simple and profound. Right. And and so, and thank you. And, and the reason I ask that again is back to, um, right, so I, I've met people who know us both and some would say to me like oh you don't practice yoga because they don't see me in classes practicing asanas and but they don't realize the level of time and energy i put into pranayama right uh and that's what i mean by people think that just uh like go to a yoga studio and how many uh, again most not all uh how many do you see asanas being practiced the majority which is great how many are really diving into pranayama practice? Not that many. And then next levels, next levels, right? Whatever that may be. <clears throat> and so to me, it's like, wow, right? Hey, great first step. But how about like, where's the rest? Uh, and <clears throat> excuse me. So like in my vocation is people misunderstood that it was to, to receive care was to fix some kind of problem right? That's because that was what was perpetuated. And that's what you find in most chiropractic offices versus the true source was to help people connect, uh, to remember who they are, to upgrade their nervous system. So to unite man, the physical with man, the spiritual, mm -hmm. to have a greater self of self expression, mm -hmm. right? So, and I say that from here's two divine art forms and because of stuff, human mind, um, whatever that was, the fear of perpetuating truth, right up because of judgment uh, uh or the ignorance because i didn't even know it existed right mm -hmm. uh and so i'm grateful to have you on on the call today to unpack for people um like an, another and i forgot to share this in the introduction you're also a uh, uh you have a doctorate in physical in a uh, acupuncture right and i remember years ago somebody said so what do you think about acupuncture i'm like well quite frankly it doesn't matter what i think if any art form's been around for 10,000 years, mm -hmm. mm, probably got something to it, right? I mean, if it survived 10,000 years, uh, you might want to pay attention to that. Um, yeah, so uh, so I'll, I'll quit yapping and you just take it where you want to roll. Sure, thank you so much, Lou. And um, let me bring uh, different aspects and understanding of yoga. Right. As you mentioned about the physicality, as we mentioned a little bit about the pranayama, the breath work within yoga. And a lot of people know the yoga about meditation. But if you see yoga comes from so many sources, um, there are some amazing yogis that their focus is the voice is mantras, is, mm. is chanting, is singing. So their focus, their their practice of union between them and the divine is through songs is through chanting the word for the divine is to um devotion of that the sound mm -hmm. and the vibrations yeah uh so there are some other yogis that their focus is seva that would also call karma yoga, that would be the selfless service. So they are serving uh, the world, the population. Maybe they are working with nature. Maybe they are working with the environment in deeper levels. Maybe they are um, serving uh, the, mo the least privileged people from that place of love. So their practice of yoga and their union with the divine is done through service. Mm. So there are so many different expressions of yoga. I, and I, uh, Sorry. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. no, go. You're the guest. Go. 
<laughs> no, but I love when you interrupt me because yeah. then I always bring some juiciness to it. So, so the piece you shared about the the yeah. the, uh, the chanting, right? Um, I remember when we were we were in Tibet, and uh, a couple couple things. One little side note to the listening audience: Lydia and I happened to be uh, we were blessed to be with this high lama who took us on this beautiful hike up into the mountains and then took us into the cave where he was cloistered for two years. Basically, that's where he sat in meditation for two years, never left the cave. They would just bring him food and water periodically. Um, what a commitment, right? And that same, so we were, actually went into the cave. Uh, and then there were stories. I forgot about the story until just now. Literally, because we heard the stories about these miraculous things, there are handprints, and we put our hands in them. A handprint on these, I don't know the actual um, mineral of the mountain, but I'll call it granite, meaning and this was rock. This wasn't um, uh, sandstone, right? This wasn't soft stuff. And there's a handprint in the actual, like deep into the mountain wall. Somebody was able to connect to the mountain and put their hand in it, right? Um, so anyways, I, I'm just tripping out remembering that in this moment. The, the connection back to the, the piece you shared about the mantra was having known the Om Mani Padmi Hum, hearing that right as a neophyte, it was just another thing to say, a prayer, understanding the translation of the prayer. So the words to be said versus what you teach and when i came to understand is it's the words of the enunciation but it's the vibration that's causing the oscillations into all of the fields in the body is where the healing comes from and then i remembered uh, reading in james nestor's book breathe or breath the he was linking everything from like the catholic rosary to the tibetan no money pod me home uh, to a breath cadence that was like 5.5 to 6 seconds where these were um, uh, chanted, that that's the combination of the oscillation of the vibration and the breath cycle is what was causing such profound shifts in people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I love this subject. It is back into vibration, right? Everything is vibration. And once you, we start attune our vibration with the, uh, the that vibration, that's um, vibration of love, vibration of positivity, vibration of um, truth, you know, then uh, we are cleansing the lower vibrations within ourselves. No, so that's that's why I love connecting with a pranayama practice, with a chanting practice, a mantra practice, with an asana practice, but connecting and coming from that place of vibration, energetics. Mm. So it's beautiful to connect it to uh, a movement, for example, a sun salutation, that it is a sequency of several asanas together. You can do the asanas in movements, seeing just the physicality, the anatomy, the physiology, the circulation. That's already absolutely beautiful because you are enhancing so much the health within your system and bringing extra focus into the energetics that those movements is um, expanding inside. It's oh, phenomenal. And just like you said, once we bring that also with the um, cadence of the breath and the energetics of the breath with the energetics of the anatomy, that would be the energetics of the also the internal world, the thoughts, the feelings. <sighs> then that's union. That's this bliss. That's what we call Ananda. That's uh, translating into bliss. So I'm going to take a second just to to possibly sidestep here for the listening audience in case you might not be in, uh, involved in yoga, uh, energetics, or this type of healing world. Uh, the concept that Liddy just described, to make it very practical, 
uh, if you look at like cleaning jewelry, right, some rings, <clears throat> you can take um, uh, polishes, right, put the polish on, let it dry and polish it off, and you've now cleaned and brightened the, the jewelry. Or you can put it into something called a sonicator. And actually, once you put the jewelry in and turn this thing on, the dirt jumps off of the jewelry, it jumps off. It's actually sound vibrations that's resonating in such a way that boom. So literally, it's a it's a new version of cleaning jewelry. Uh, and so it's a energetic vibrational way to do so. And uh, so when Lydia was talking earlier about connecting through these practices, and you can clean the lower vibrations, those would be the uh, connected to so like frustrations and angers and disappointments and sadness. Those are on a scale like these are all measurable. Um, and so when we engage in any kind of practice to uh, resonate at a higher frequency, then it helps offsets, it acts like a sonicator, and it awakens and activates things in the mental body, the subtle bodies, or the physical, physical bodies, so they can then be processed and moved on and healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there, yeah. please. Yeah, and and then and thank you so much, Lou. That was beautiful, and that was a, a beautiful segue and a beautiful explanation there. And sometimes people say yes, but this is all beautiful and and complex. So how do I start if I mm. want to start? Um, well, there are many different ways to start, and I would say the first one, presence, be aware of uh, what are you feeling like be aware of your thoughts be aware of how you're breathing be aware of how you're moving be aware that you have this amazing physicality this body this same temple really this is our temple to to support our soul to express and expand and evolve in this planet in this moment in time that we are here Right. So uh, by being aware, we are able to then change if that's necessary or if that's desirable. Yeah? So um, I love to remind all of my students, my clients and, and my friends to um, take a breath. Notice. Notice, like, for example, when the temperature of the air that's coming in through your nostrils is going to be a little cooler. Normally, the air outside is cooler than the air that it comes out because it's going to be a little warmer. So that's one is start. How can I start observing my breath? Then how can I start observing the feelings of my body? As Lou mentioning that in nature, the first thing that animals do is a stretch. So noticing if you stretch a little bit your body, your arm, how does that feel? How does that change in you? Does that change even your state of awareness or your state of being? So presence. Yeah, so that's, uh, congratulations, because asking the original question of, well, how do I start? You know, there's, let me count the ways, right? So picking this one is profound, and it, and it triggered in me the, um, like, oh my goodness, as a witness, how unfortunately many humans have become uh, non aware mm -hmm. of just, just spatial orientation, right? And where I'm at, because it's be we have uh, adopted this culture of self centeredness, right? Meaning, like, when someone's on the phone, right, and they're in a group of people and they have it on uh, whatever speaker, right? And now they're having this loud conversation with the other person or party of people in, a, in an environment where nobody else asked to participate in your conversation or hear what the other people are saying. So there's back to that awareness, right? This mindfulness. Am I being mindful that right now I probably should take it off a speaker and just have a private conversation? to not like oh i don't care if they hear that's not the point right it's i'm impacting people without having the respect that i might be doing that 
Uh, how about when you're driving down the road, right? Or is there somebody pulling up behind you like, hey, man, just slide out of the way and let them go by and then do your thing. Um, awareness. So from the what I'm doing in my field to what I'm doing in my system as Liddy's already uh, focused on, right? Where are my thoughts? Where is my breath, right? This power of breath. Remember, every breath we take informs us at the cellular level. Are you safe or are you not? So that'd be a great place to start yeah, as Lily just offered. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Lou. And in that point, you also brought, um, like, for example, in yoga, there is something that's called the eight limbs. And mm. this is just a base of understanding the pathways that we can take in yoga. And um, and within the eight limbs, there is like the understanding, like I mentioned, the asanas, the postures, the movements, the physicality, the breath, the pranayamas. Uh, there is something that's called the yamas and the niyamas. And it's really in, in, in easy ways to see is how I treat myself within myself and how I treat others. Mm. And when I treat others is also how I allow others to treat me. So it goes back also in allowing how do I treat myself? Yeah. So, and this is, is, is like you mentioned about the person on the phone is, am I being respectful to them? Am I honoring them? And then at the same time, how am I being truth to myself? Yeah. If I'm not honoring then I'm disrespecting. Am I disrespecting myself also? So um, it's, it's the beautiful things of discernment into how am I honoring my soul and knowing that my soul, my spirit, my well-being, my individuality is truly linked into the individuality and the multi-expressions of everything. Mm. Yeah, like back to yoga. Yoga is union. So um, my truly my happiness will be different, directly affected in so many ways with the happiness overall. Yeah, I'm not saying that if I'm not happy, you know, everybody's going to be unhappy or if everybody's unhappy, I'm going to be unhappy. Not that. It's in a way, it's like once I am happy, I am a, a coming from a place of truth. My energetic field, my vibration is affecting positively the vibration of my surroundings. Yeah. So since we are all energy, we are all being uh, affected positively or not positively you know sure that we all can have our own inner filters but depending how we are um how can i say in our understanding of vibration if i'm someone that i don't understand anything about vibration and that i'm susceptible to receive everything and anything that comes around you know that means that if uh, uh, someone besides me that's being really not nice is going to be affecting me. Yeah. In other words, sure that I support everybody to keep advancing and enhancing their ability to understand in life, to understand in vibration. That's why I teach yoga. <laughs> yeah. So more and more they understand, they then see how their well-being is affecting others mm, love and it. how they can support themselves to do not be affected by negativity mm, beautiful yeah so it goes both ways yeah and yeah. i trust that I, I i hold the space that i was a little bit clear in my explanation because i attempted to be really basic and sometimes i like to go a little far away uh, so to me it was crystal clear and for the listening Thank audience you. i'll do a quick uh, perspective summary from my point of view not trying to restate what you said i've heard it said this way is uh, on on the external expression we are always impacting people by our presence the question is are we infecting or affecting right meaning if i'm bringing the 
quote unquote lower vibrations, right? If I'm angry, uh, sad, depressed, pissed off, uh, and not judging those as wrong, but if I'm carrying that state, then that's what I impact other people with, right? Versus if I show up in joy and gratitude and happiness and enthusiasm, passion, um, then that's what I'm also affecting this the fields with other people's fields, right? Um, and so I'm responsible for that. Back to the earlier conversation of mindfulness, right? What am I bringing to my interactions? Uh, and then the flip side, also what Lydia was sharing was, uh, I used the term, are you a thermometer or a thermostat? Meaning, since we're doing that with others, meaning our presence, everybody else's presence is also doing it with us. So if we are playing victim, then those people are, are affecting me, right? Oh, that's an energy vampire. Oh, that person's dark and they're sucking my energy. Nobody can do anything to you without your permission right mm -hmm. so get out of the passenger seat quit playing victim get into the driver's seat to take ownership of their life so they might show up but if you manage your environment eh, thanks for playing cancel clear right because it's my field it's my energy it's my well-being and that's on me beautiful beautiful yeah. and on that managing the internal environment and you you brought it up a little bit earlier in the aspects of emotions all emotions are beautiful all mm. emotions are important and necessary for our own growth you know sometimes i feel pissed off in something but then i have the opportunity to go inside and say why did that particular event piss me off or trigger me you know because then i have that amazing beautiful opportunity to to understand myself a little bit more and to shift yeah so yeah. Uh, that's the part of yoga when is that part of the yoga that the niyamas when we look internally mm -hmm. and we start to understand and we start to see uh what you mentioned in my uh, thermometer or a thermostat is the environment triggering me or again, am I allowing the environment triggering trigger me? Why? What am I holding that I have not understood or let go or release or transform inside of me that I'm allowing to be triggered by? Mm -hmm. And Beautiful. the cool thing is that once uh, myself or once we as human beings um, are give ourselves time, give ourselves presence to go in and understand transform let it go or or um uh, release uh, that particular something stuff is not going to trigger anymore so there is a different level of joyfulness because no matter what the divine the creator creators however each one of us choose to name it um supports enjoyment peace joy passion exploration of this amazing planet and within this planet is not only that i'm saying uh, go travel everywhere it's like be present with a flower be present with a sunset a sunrise be present with a cup of tea with somebody else be present with the birth of your children. Be present with the, the death of your loved ones. Be present with every special moment. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful, uh, especially in this day and age in this culture where not not just this day and age. It's been, from my perspective, it's been going on for way too long. Uh, the encouragement to not be present. We live in a world of sedation whatever that is. Oh, I have a heartache, right? Um, not heartburn. Well, even that heartburn, take something, right? But I have heartache. You don't have to feel that. Uh, take something, drink something, do something, unplug from the feeling, right? And as Liddy's already invited us, says, no, 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 the way back home is through the feelings. Uh, we've been taught to be afraid of some of the body sensations, uh, and so we run and we don't want to be there. We go up into our head, we leave our body, right? And that's where a big part of the gift is the body's inviting you to come back in. Hence, some of the symptoms or sensations you feel. It's not something that's supposed to be shot and killed, cut out, 
it, it's it's meant to be embraced to re-engage in because there's a gift there's a message there's a learning uh there for each of us yeah so there's two pieces i would like to to ask you to unpack one is mm -hmm. uh the you the concept of mudras right so when i learned this from you like oh these these ancient yoginis were pretty sharp people mm -hmm. uh be, so right so to me the, the the description is there's this beautiful circuitry right this electronic circuitry or intranet if you will in the body and uh these certain hand positions hook up these electrical pathways the energetic pathways to tap in so would you please unpack that and now mm -hmm. that i've said that out loud uh i will include a link at the in the show notes uh, Liddy doesn't know this, but I've just now made an offer uh, opportunity where you can get access to uh, a free copy of her book called the uh, top 10 mudras uh, and Siddhartha that Liddy had written years ago. Uh, that will give you just that the top 10 mudras and she'll talk you through the process now that she's going to explain. It. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lou. So again, yoga is such a integrative i would say aspects of seeing life there are so many different ways to see their union and there are many different ways of express the word mudras mudras are gestures there are mudras that are done with the entire body there are mudras that are done with the body and in connection to the breath but this is specific mudras i'm going to share is mudras done gestures with your hands um, as Lou mentioned something about acupuncture earlier, uh, and in the body through acupuncture, when they put needles in the body, they are activating uh, specific places of the energetic pathways in the body. And in the view of yoga and Ayurveda, that's the sister of yoga, um, you connected to those pathways and we call uh, marma points or nadis. That's the flow of energy in the body. And the points would be the marma points. So anyway, they are all over the body, just like your, your circulation, your blood circulation, your uh, lymphatic or uh, nervous circulation that you have pathways throughout the body. You have the energetics. So once we connect the hands, in a specific ways, we are activating those pathways of energy that might be connecting to specific um, organs. Uh, they are connected to specific structures in the body. And the structures and the organs or the viscerals area, they are connected to our emotions. So that would be, I can go deeper into these aspects on the next uh, podcast. But right now, just to connect it, I would say that uh, mudras are the asanas for your hands, are the postures or the gestures for your hands. Yeah, we can activate those pathways of energy with the asanas or the movements or and the postures in yoga, and we can activate with the hands. And I would support everybody to connect it. This is a very simple mudra and is the peace sign. It's called prana mudra. And as we mentioned before, prana means uh, the life force, the energy that's connected to our breath. And the beautiful thing of this mudra, once we join the peace sign, right, um, we are activating deeper the energy that connect, connects to the lungs and heart. So I would invite you once you're watching this podcast, just take a moment to do a peace sign and connect to your breath. And then take a couple of breaths with the peace sign, then let go of your hands and keep breathing. Observe the breath. And then after a couple of breaths, join in the mudra again and observe the breath. And you start to notice. Some of you might notice that your breath expands a little easier, some of you might notice that your even your nostrils open a little bit more. Some of you might feel different sensations on the body. I'm not saying too much here, so you can experience for yourself. Mamudras is a particular activation 
of those channels of energy in our bodies. Yeah. Mm. And in this particular book that Lou was saying, I shared just about 10 mudras that we connected the, those pathways of energy. And I bring it in some connection to the chakras. The chakras are the centers of energy in the body. Um, and again, there are so many understanding and deeper levels of comprehensions of the chakras. Uh, but basic, you will connect it to the, the chakras, the centers of energy. And I also bring affirmations to each one of the mudras. So um, I will support you tremendously to do this practice for yourself uh, with this gentle, gentle book that um, that will increase tremendously your ability to be present. Mm. And just by being present, you are enhancing your life in so many ways. And if in case you are not sure about how, just practice the prana mudra and you will uh, learn for yourself and experience for yourself. And just click the link and get a free copy of a book, right? That's pretty <laughs> easy. Uh, and so thank you for that. And you will have also just, sorry, Lou, but you will have also my contact anytime you want to ask questions, just reach out. We'll include our contact in the show notes as well. The, uh, so thank you for that beautiful description. Um, something that just, well, I'll just, it'll be a quick plug, uh, planting a seed concept actually. And that is, uh, I was thinking back to the, uh, yamas and yamas about, uh, my expression externally and my expression internally, how I treat myself, right. <clears throat> and how I allow myself to be treated. And then also the combination of mindfulness, right. And the power of how we speak in the external world, but how do we speak to ourselves? Right? Mm. And for me, as you well know, the uh, a huge piece of that is what I call conscious languaging. Because how I speak, the words that I use are a reflection of my current state of consciousness and my worldview and my perceptions and all this other yummy stuff that, uh, again, we can unpack at some other time. Uh, however, the mindfulness and the tool to be the observer to notice Hmm. Right. So just like yoga is union, learning to uh, access our and grow our consciousness by being mindful of what we say to access our subconscious to then clean up old patterns, ways of behaving, ways of seeing the world that aren't connected to who you truly are. It's just how you believed you were meant to be. Right. Uh, so that's just another, I'm just kind of planting that seed and, and we'll unpack that later. Uh, uh, and we'll put a link to uh, some conscious languaging courses that are coming out uh, in the next two weeks. Uh, so that's just kind of, I'll leave that there. That was just me processing out loud, apparently. So uh, in closing, otherwise, because we do. So one, we're going to have another class. You and I have a podcast strictly on pranayama and the different ways to play, right? Nadi Shodana. Perfect. Uh, um, diaphragm work and and then for sure right how how can we uh, access the energetics and the emotions and how those links so we'll we'll start uh, ladies and gentlemen listening audience uh, you just heard me ask Liddy to commit uh, we'll put on a couple more <laughs> different podcast episodes uh, focusing on some of the detailed aspects of this overview that we just expressed so in closing, what would you like to leave the listening audience with of either places to start, as you mentioned? Uh, yeah. Where do you feel called to to leave them a gem as we wrap up this first of many podcasts together? Well, first, I want to say thank you for the invitation for many more. I'm excited for that. And um, and thank you. Thank you for today, for this moment. And thank you, everybody that's uh, listening and, and watching. I definitely would uh, say that start by observing your breath. Start by being present. Start by dropping yourself into a space of gratitude. You know, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's really easy to take for granted that we are here, we are breathing, mm -hmm. we are moving, we are getting up, we are seeing the sunrise and the sunset. Um, but we are very privileged to 
to be in privilege and honored to be able to be present, to be able to be here now, to be able to breathe and see the, the beauty of uh, life. So I would start with a, a moment of gratitude. And within a moment of gratitude, you're already bringing a moment of presence for you and a moment of centering. And so I will start there. Mm. And, and then observe also how you are talking to yourself, how you are honoring yourself and how you are honoring others and your surroundings. Um, if you remember, if you are saying, uh, I love you, and if you're saying, I love myself. And uh, so I would start there before even you start with major movements. And if you want to start with some good movements, just to start with some belly laughs. That is a great way to start. And if you want to go further, start with the pranayama and the breath there. Start breathing with the prana mudra, reminding that you are being peace and you are being love. Beautiful. Um, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And in closing also, so ladies and gentlemen, I will uh, also put this invitation out there that on October 12th to the 15th, Lydia and I are co-facilitating a four day immersion called the Tao living experience or the art of living experience where, uh, this is true, deep healing transformation. Mm -hmm. Um, to help integrate the stuff in your systems, wherever that is, your mental body, your emotional body, your physical body, all those, um, to help integrate what's not been integrated that sets you free so you can really step into the next place of who you be and express that in the world for joy, for creativity, for production, for abundance, you know, wherever that is for you. I don't know now, but we'll discover it when we get together and play. Uh, we happen to be blessed to be caretakers of over... 92 acres of amazing forests at the foothills of the Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee. And it's just incredible bliss of nature, wildlife, tree. It is a forest. And um, that's where the four days will be. So if you'd like to come play with us, right, it's an intimate group of only 20 people where because there's only 20 and there's two of us, uh, you can't hide. In a safe and sacred space, we will help you move through what you haven't been able to grow, heal, and evolve from as of yet. Yep. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to have anything, quote unquote, wrong. That's not the point. <clears throat> We're not here to fix anything. Yep. So the link will also be in the show notes. The Art of Living Four Day Immersion. Uh, we'd love to have you if that resonates, right? Uh, and if, if this is the time, join us. If not, check back in. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Dow Living Podcast. Please help us and share this with others so more people can hear uh, what's the wisdom that is unpacking from this amazing soul, Lydia Meto. And Miss Lydia, thank you so much for your time. And again, happy birthday. Thank you so much, Lou. Thank you. Thank Until you next everybody. time, people. Abundant blessings. Peace. Ciao. Ciao. To connect further and dive deeper, you can always reach me at my website, lucorletto.com l-o-u-c-o-r-l-e-t-o -O -E or in the social channels facebook lucorletto.official instagram lu underscore corletto twitter lu underscore corletto and linkedin until next time remember who you be abundant blessings